I don't quite understand the lyrics. Beautiful melody line. <laughs> Inspirational. I'm totally swept away. <laughs> you want the truth? <laughs> Actually, about a month after after we put our names to paper that we were in the studio, we kind of we made this wish list, this producer wish list, and um, decided that we wanted a Terry Date because he had done all of, you know Pantera stuff and Prong, and we really liked what he did. And then we found out that uh, he's not available, so we went with Ulrich, who was his assistant on all that stuff. When I first heard their demo, I, I got to the the first chorus, and I was, I was ready to do the record. And I was surprisingly the whole thing all the way through was, was actually almost so good that I was a little worried that I wasn't able to improve on it. But I did. Grandmaster hadn't been touched since 1971. Grandmaster was cheap. And you felt completely comfortable. Ken, a uh, really, really great drummer. We did live overdubs of uh, cymbals. So Ken was lucky enough to, to play the, the record twice. I can't move my hands. Ah! Damn. Damn. I only spent about four days working, and the rest of the time, you know, I was kind of the cheerleader for the band. It was actually a really good time. Very relaxing. <laughs> you know, yeah, relatively <laughs> stress-free. It's 13 other status. And it, it just, if there's one or two, we were gonna try to pay them off. Right. But we don't have, I mean, we don't have the money. Yeah. We went into uh, 80s mode, it was like, you know, static riot, and quiet static. <laughs> Merciful static, and then Statelica. <laughs> Koichi, he's a crazy man, really. His brain, I think, operates differently from the rest of us. I hear something like this in there. A day later or an hour later, he'll come back with something that's just totally amazing. Who the fuck is smoking my pot? Strictly medicinal purposes, you understand, yeah? I'm here for breakfast every day. What's the Master's of rectal pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> Supercalifragilisticexpialidocinetic. Wayne, really great because you know he plays it twice and it's pretty much doubled. A couple of little punch-ins here and there, and man, you know, he's ready to go. Um, same thing with vocals, uh, very proficient, he just nails them, you know, right through there. Nice to play that low too? Yeah. When do I come back in? Okay, it's coming up, here we go. One, two, three, four. Some more. Uh, I think you're done. Uh, Tony, uh, a, a lot of groove in that man. He, he, he actually does a lot for the band. He, he really holds things together down, down in the right, low end. And, you know, just glue. He's definitely the glue. <laughs> Bass 
Yeah, he's gay. He's in the closet. Yeah. All right, ready for me now? Sure, take off your pants, stand up there. <laughs> what do you think you're gonna do, Dan? Why do they call you Big Gay John, though? Wayne? Who calls him that? That's how the whole gay thing started. Yeah. Because I'm not. We don't really have lyrics, it's all just like do 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 you know, here's this guy that's just a larger than life persona on stage, and then you, you get him off stage, and he's really, he's a kickback, mellow guy. Go! Not enough to sweat off the bud, and it's to show me to the end, giving up all the need or none. I'm my worst critic on, for vocals. If it's not bothering me, it must not be too bad. <laughs> Naked. <laughs> Naked. <laughs> Pubic? <laughs> That's funny. I used to think Paul Stanley like was gonna quit Kiss and they were gonna ask, secretly ask me to join, and no one would know. Peter Chris from Kiss, and Neil Peart, Stuart Copeland, John Bonham, and got Tommy Lee. Suicidal tendencies, DRI. Um, Cryptic Slaughter, uh, this band called Crumb Suckers, they're pretty cool. Metallica and Anthrax and SOD was huge for me. Um, Gordy from uh, Drum and Bass King. <laughs> and then we went out and just cut the record in four weeks. Just knocked the whole thing out. Go in, nail it, leave. Because there's not much second guessing going on and there are imperfections of it, it sounds like a real record as opposed to something that could have been picked to death. That um, happens too often nowadays. Good night. Best uh, two month vacation I ever had. And then when we got done, uh, I went back to work. You gotta keep playing all the time, people forget about you. And our record wasn't out or anything, and, and we had taken a couple months off to record, so I was, thought it was really important that we get back out there. It was brewing, that there was something real, that, that it, wasn't, it wasn't bullshit, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't made up, it wasn't invented in the boardroom of a record company. Years like it was like this mad crush of people, like a heat wave came hit me, my glasses fogged up, and as I like kind of cleared them off, this big guy who I was it was barely English, like he grunted. It was like this is so fucking hot, I'm gonna kill people. I was like oh, I'm gonna die here. <laughs> Static is the first band that could pack a club and almost divide the club in half. Where you had in the back, like the most out of hand mosh pit, and in the front, just girls just dancing.
Fan club, which I have to be 